Yeah, right. I'm gonna have a little conversation. Also change out my number plate because it was starting to peel up. And um, I'd order one from Pop Graphics, tried to put it on there, did it the right way with uh, cleaning it with alcohol, um, using a bottle of uh, a spray bottle with water with just one drop of Dawn detergent and made sure my hands were wet and never the graphics were wet, the front was wet. No matter how I put it on there, I could get it straight, but it would not conform to the curves without getting wrinkles in it. And so I just pulled it off and just went with white numbers. So that'll suffice for track and breaks up the blue a little bit. And I've got extras in case I need to put some up there. So let's see what we've got. So our conversation today is going to be about, um, you know, I've done the gearing changes. I've tried to um, increase the acceleration a little bit. Not that it needed it, but I felt like it wasn't as fast as it should be. So I thought going down a tooth in the front, we went with a longer chain. Um, what I found with the one tooth down the front is it certainly made the bike nicer at whatchamacallit, at uh, um, lower speeds and parking lots. You didn't have to slip the clutch as much. However, it also, with the extent, with the ex extra acceleration, it was making the front end come up, which makes the electronics put it back down. Here's a conclusion I found because I, I ran into this uh, running with Cody, just goofing around in the interstate a little bit. Um, and then I uh, did the same with Nico yesterday on his um, Moto 2 edition Daytona 765. Now, both of those are very fast bikes, but I'm looking at an R1 that's got a DCAT, it's got the tune, um, all the restrictions lifted. I should be making anywhere from 40 to 50 horsepower at the wheel more than them. Um, Cody's bike is strong. So he's probably in the low 130s at the wheel. Nico's bike, the Daytona, is probably mid, you know, 125-ish at the wheel. And so um, I'm thinking, okay, I've got at least an extra 40, if not 50 horsepower. Um, I should, in a, in a straight line acceleration, I should blow them away. And I'm not. And even up to like 150, they're just, they're like right behind me. I may be pulling away slightly, but it's slightly. It feels like I've got five horsepower more than them. I'm thinking, well, how can that be? This thing is crazy fast. It's running right. It is going on the dyno Wednesday, um, so we'll see what the actual horsepower is. But I'm guessing it's up in the high 170s, somewhere near 180. Um, I know there's variations from dyno to dyno, but it, it should be where it is, uh, where it needs to be. And um, I've run it in B mode. I've run it in A mode. A mode is not any harder accelerating than um, B mode. They both produce same top horsepower. The difference is when you snap the throttle. The, the, the A mode will do that quick lunge a little bit more. It's almost like going from a normal throttle to like a quarter turn or something. It, it just reacts faster. But after that initial split second and that little bit of more twitchiness where it feels more aggressive, you're still getting full horsepower. So it's gotta be one of the other electronic systems. I'm thinking it's the wheelie control, and here's the conclusion I'm kinda of drawing on these things, is that leader bikes have gotten so powerful that it is really hard to put it all to the ground. There's, you know, it, it may weigh a little bit more than a 600, but it's not like a Harley. So they're all about the same weight, all around you know, the same wheelbase and things like that. A couple pounds either way aren't gonna make a difference. Um, at some point, you have so much energy being applied, so much force to the rear wheel, it can only accelerate so fast in a straight line before, assuming you keep your traction, that power is gonna to wanna to lift the front. I don't know if it's Newton's second law or third law of, of, of motion, but you know, an object at rest wants to stay at rest and an object at rest uh, in motion wants to stay in motion. So as you're accelerating, you're overcoming the inertia of whatever state of rest it's at or the certain velocity it's at and you're trying to accelerate it and it's gonna to wanna to resist that. At some point that resistance, its ability to push forward is going to be more than the what it's pushing back. Maybe I'm not explaining this quite right, but at some point it can't really accelerate any faster because it doesn't have enough weight to hold it down. It's gonna start pulling that up. Of course somebody would start a circular saw in the middle of the video. It's always something. So what I'm finding what I suspect is that until you get up at really stupid speeds, this thing just, you cannot give this bike, and probably most leader bikes, full throttle in first, second, or third. Maybe in third, it'll start to not cut back, but even third wheelies on its own. 
and that's with stock gearing. And um, but first and second, you can't give it full throttle in first and hold it there. There's only three things that can possibly happen. Either it loops itself and it will. If on the gas and you don't ease up, you don't hit the back brake, you're not doing something to cut power or letting the ECU cut the power, that bike will go up in first and right on its back. No, no, no question. It will do it in second to where you can lean over the front and it picks my 250 pound ass up and I'm not able to keep that front end down unless I roll off the gas. So what that tells me is that there is, it doesn't matter if this has 200 pound horsepower or 400 horsepower. You can only accelerate so fast. And that's why guys that are doing quarter mile times and drag racing and get those higher times, they're extending the swing arms and doing all that stuff. And the point is, is to keep that front end down. Wheelies may look cool. Wheelies make you slower. You can't steer. And at some point, the more you come up, you're only able to accelerate and you're having to modulate the gas. The point is you're never at full throttle. If you're at full throttle and holding it, you're gonna loop it unless something intervenes, and that's what the electronics are doing. So, running in A mode and B mode, I do not like A mode. Um, and I like bikes that are brutal and stuff like that, but it's so herky and jerky, and this is after the ECU flash, this is after we've done um, the fuel cut, got that eliminated. The on-off throttle response, when you're just cruising along at 35 miles an hour or something in town in first, it's because you're it has so much power, you're either at 1% and you're accelerating <laughs> or you're cutting the throttle and you're decelerating. And so when you're trying to ride that on off throttle there, it's just so abrupt that it's like riding a bucking Bronco. It feels like there's something wrong. And you know, maybe when you're at faster speeds, that's fine. You don't notice it as much, but around town, A is useless. And the key to going fast is being smooth. When you look at Aprilia, Aprilia, the way that they do their um, rider aids is the opposite of what everybody else does, what Yamaha, Honda, even Ducati does. You think normally sport mode or street mode is tameish, um, and then track mode is more aggressive, and then the race is really aggressive. And that's not how Aprilia does things. And this is why I'm going down this little rabbit hole here. A really, Aprilia is a company of racers. They're not the biggest company out there. They're probably one of the smallest manufacturers, but at heart, they are racers, even more so than Ducati. And they think like racers. And what makes a racer fast? What produces the fast lap time? Smoothness. When you're riding 200 horsepower fire-breathing fire monsters and you're on the side of the tire at a race pace, not that I am, but someone far better than me is, and you're at that edge and the limit of what's possible with grip, that is not when you want it uh, 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 and being abrupt. You know, having to try to feather that throttle. You want smoothness, smooth acceleration, smooth to maintain that traction so that the tire doesn't break loose. And that's why race mode on an Aprilia is the smoothest and the softest delivery. It's still full power. It will give you the whole horsepower, but it's going to ease it on and ease it off with that throttle, not like a light switch. Bam, there it is, or you don't get anything. And that's what this feels like in A mode. So when I go stay in B mode, I'm going to start turning down the lift control, but I don't want to turn those systems off. And this is my quandary, is what settings can I get so that I have the safety net? Because I ride this thing like an idiot. I do some track. I'm going to be doing some track days on it, but I ride the mountains aggressively. And on a bike with that kind of power, I, you know, I know some people say like, oh, don't be a wuss. You know, turn all the electronics off. You don't need it. Well, there's a reason why Mark Marquez and Rossi use traction control, and wheelie control, and lift control, because it makes them faster and safer. Um, you're risking your life every time you throw a leg over that. I don't have ego when it comes to, um, you know, I'm not going to kill myself over ego, I guess is what I'm saying. We all have ego, but I'm not going to kill myself over ego. I'm not going to kill myself because I think that I know better than the engineers and the people with the pocket protectors and the tens of millions of dollars spent on R&D with the folks who designed this. I don't, I'm not arrogant enough to think that I know better or I'm faster than that computer. I'm not. But I do want to get it to a point where it's not shutting down the party prematurely. It's not killing the fun. I want that maximum forward thrust um, without killing myself. But I don't want it to intervene so so much that it's really not any faster than a 750. <laughs> and that's what I'm finding. And I'm, and I'm wondering, and I'm looking for advice or thoughts here. 
I wonder if the reality is that up to a point, you know, when you look at zero to 60 times on bikes, the difference between a liter bike and a 600, it's 0.1 of a second, despite being a 60 horsepower difference and not much weight difference. When you look at quarter mile times, 600s are down in the low tens. You know, you might be a quarter of a second faster on a liter bike. Um, so the, 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 the inconvenient truth might be that it's not that different. Up at 150, 160, where the 600 is, is topping out because of wind resistance, and that's just all the horsepower it has to push through the wind, maybe that's where these things really shine, and they just keep going up to 180, 190, while the 600 is sucking wind back at 158, 161, something like that. Um, but acceleration was not as much, the difference isn't as much as I thought it would be. Um, those guys were, and I've done this a couple times over a couple days, uh, different days, and the results were the same, was that the 765 and the 750 were right on my ass. Now, we didn't have a place where we could go to 180 where I could leave them long behind. But I think when it comes to that acceleration, there's, it doesn't matter how much power the engine has or how much it makes. There's only so much power you can put it to the wheel before the bike starts doing this or the tire steps out or something else happens. And if you're not going to intervene, the computer is going to. So either way, power is getting cut. So the dyno charts almost don't matter to a point. Every single time. And I don't know why kids can't talk to each other. They have to scream at each other all the time. So annoying. This is why I didn't have kids. One of the many reasons why I didn't have kids. The other reason why I didn't have kids so I could have a garage full of this shit. But also so I didn't have to listen to kids just screaming about nonsense all the time. So I'll try to wrap this up before I get too annoyed. But to let me know your thoughts. And if you've got an R1 and you've gone through this where you're like, you want the electronic intervention because you don't want to hide yourself, high side yourself to the moon. You want to be somewhat safe, as safe as you can be riding, you know, way faster, you know, triple the speed limit on the streets. But I want to find that balance between having the safety nut, having some intrusion to keep me from inadvertently looping it or, or high siding myself, but at the same time, not, um, having it shut it down to where it's only delivering 750 performance. Does that make sense? So let me know your thoughts. That's what I'm finding on this thing. It's a hoot. I don't regret the purchase at all. I'm just, I'm trying to dial in the electronics to get that happy medium where I should be blowing away a 750 on a straightaway, but not killing myself in the process. Effing kids. I hate kids. <laughs> Because it's impossible to get through anything. And they just shout. They'll be five, five doors down from each other. Instead of just calling from their iPhones or going over talking, they'll shout back and forth down the street for an hour. Which, of course, sets the dogs off and sets me off. So anyway, I've gotten on this uh, tangent. Um, someday I'm going to figure out how to do this without having to contend with that nonsense. But anyway, give me your thoughts. We'll talk to you later.